I build decentralized heat to power solutions, which means we're at our heart a German engineering company that builds small power generation solutions, second generation renewable energy that brings electricity to communities that are not connected to a national grid. There's a billion people on this planet who have no electricity at all. There's two billion people on the planet that are relying on diesel generators to have their electricity. Now, this is very expensive and very, very dirty. Now, a year ago, uh, we were looking at how do we start up this kind of technology? How do we reach communities that are effectively unbankable? Thank you very much. How do we reach communities that are unbankable um, to make a difference in their lives? Now, power means that a hospital has electricity to do an operation. It means that the school has internet so that children get educated. It means that a business can sell cold beer. That makes people happy. Um, I was in London, and I met Devank Patel and Harvinder, who's here somewhere, and they said, fly to Dubai and meet Michael. So a year ago, I was sitting in this audience and listening to the vision and the potential of the Dascoin community. Um, the power of the blockchain, the, the amazing ability that smart contracts offer. And Michael was always surrounded by people asking him questions. And at one point, I approached him, and I asked something that no one has ever asked him, at least not an event like this. You look hungry. Should I get you something to eat? Yeah. And that bought me time. So I told him about the challenge that we have, about wanting to bring power to emerging markets. I have an asset that I'd like to tokenize and offer to communities. He told me about DAS33 a long time before it came. He told me about what he wanted to achieve, and this is something where we can work together. Because the power of communities, where people care about people, you can start up projects, do the feasibility that no one wants to do, and make a project bankable in places where no banks will go. And we put this to the test a month and a half ago or so, and in 60 hours, we raised one and a half million euros. And that's worth an applause, because you did that. Now, in an energy project, that's not a lot, but it covers the feasibility, it allows us to do projects in remote areas. So yesterday, I was in shorts and sandals um, about 200 kilometers outside Nairobi at 2 o'clock in the morning, and I had to trek back through the darkness with an armed guard uh, to get my flight to be here. So I arrived from Kenya last night, and I'm flying back to Kenya tonight, because that's where we're doing the work, and that's where we're trying to make a difference. But we're testing this technology in Germany. And I need the next slide, please, because this isn't doing anything. <laughs> nope. Ah, yes. OK. So Michael just talked about be making something transparent. And that is the power and the beauty of the blockchain and a smart contract. So what you see here is a drill of a first test installation in Sonspec in Germany. This is something actual and something tangible and something measurable. Now, we drill a few holes into the ground, we produce heat, which later will turn into power. That is measured. It creates pressure. You can connect it to the internet, and the whole world can see what we do. Because when we sell electricity on a government contract, it's in the public domain. So this smart contract can link back to the KPI token, and you will get a reward. Now, that little thing means that everybody who participated in the pre-sale just a few weeks ago will have their first premium reward before Christmas. Now, I want to talk about, just for you all to understand, like what, what this actually is. Heat to power, how does this work? What does it do? How scalable is it? What is in it for everybody who participates in this? 
Because at the end of the day, we're talking about scalability. So I'd like to go on a small journey and story. Ha! OK, so it was this. I get it. It fits. <laughs> so what we have, what is heat to power? Effectively, it's a 21st century steam engine. That's it. We build steam engines. And I'll explain, this is a binary or a C cycle, which was invented in the 19th century as a concept. But I need to explain the power of steam and how, say, Graham Bell, when he connected a little thing and said hello over a phone, yeah, an iPhone is still that phone. So I'll explain how a steam engine from the 19th century can be relevant today. So I need your imagination. You need to imagine me with a cowboy hat in one of those Wild Western movies in a locomotive train shoveling coal into a fire. You also have to imagine that I'm like five kilos lighter, because that would make me really happy. So no one thinks about how does a steam engine work. Yeah? So literally, this is with my hat, and I'm shoveling coal into a fire that heats up water. Yeah? So I have thermal energy, I have heat, and that water evaporates. Yeah? And now turns into steam. This steam moves the transmission system, yeah, and through pressure, mechanical energy, moves the, the transmission system of the train, and now this, actually I'm pointing that way, right? And now the steam engine is moving forward. So a guy with a shovel and some coal and an oven and some water can create enough pressure to move a train. Now, just appreciate how much energy is in that coal, heat, and water. I'm moving a train with water and fire. Now, how do I modernize that? Yeah? So when there's too much pressure, you have this famous toot toot, yeah? and all the steam comes out. Now, that steam is gone. I want to improve that into the 21st century. I start with chemistry. I take out the water, and I put in a new organic fluid. I have to make sure that's good for the environment. So the fluid we use doesn't evaporate at 100 degrees, like water does. It evaporates at 50 degrees, so I need less energy. That's step one. And now I've improved my train by twice the energy. The next thing it does is, as it evaporates to steam, it creates 250 times more pressure than water does. Think about that. I have water moving a train, and now I can do this with 250 times more power. Now, that's a lot of pressure. And when I go doot doot, this really expensive fluid goes away. So an ORC engine, organic Rankine cycle engine, instead of releasing the steam, I capture it, and that's why it's a circle. I capture it, I cool it back down to the liquid, and use it again. So now I have a liquid, my water, that moves the steam engine that I can use again and again and again. Now I look at coal. Coal was beautiful the same way oil was for a long, long time. But we live in a time where we want clean, carbon-free economies. So I want clean energy. So I throw away the coal. I don't need it anymore. I'm standing on a planet. And the core of this Earth that we're all standing on is as hot as the surface of the sun, if I drill deep enough. So instead of shoveling coal, I dig a hole a few hundred meters deep and get the thermal energy for free. It's renewable energy. That's what renewable energy is. And I get that heat out of the ground. So now, I'm not, so now I have a renewable heat source that will be around for the next five billion years, give or take. I'm no longer shoveling. I build a system where I get heat to my liquid. It turns into steam. It moves the transmission system. And either I move a train or I connect it to an electrical generator. And now I have power. That's it, a steam engine. Now, obviously, there's a lot of complexities in, in, the, in the engineering. but what this allows us to do is put pinpoint accuracy 
The same way blockchain talks about decentralized solutions, which is the beauty of it. The same way most of sub-Saharan Africa, they never had landline phones. Never, they never built a landline because building this infrastructure is a sunken cost and it's lost. But everybody has a mobile phone now. They just skipped it. That's what technology does. And this is what this allows us to do. So rather than spending millions and millions building an infrastructure grid from large power stations, we talk to governments and we say, listen, we go straight to the village of 500 people. I actually talked to the, the, the team out of Nigeria and they have a community, 25 communities, 500 to 900 people using diesel generators or have no power. We can solve a problem like that in nine to 12 months and gave them the same electricity that you have here. <laughs> it's true, okay. Now the next thing is the process, because building these projects, and I've been in energy since 2008, and I'll introduce the team, is actually really straightforward and really easy. So what we do in Germany, where you saw that picture generating pressure, is the same thing we'd be doing in Nigeria a year from now, Kenya early next year. And it's financed by the Stork token. Yeah, that's, what it, that's what this first raise is going to go to, to Kenya, to bring power to a hospital in Muale for 5,000 people that have no hospital right now. So they're building that hospital and we'll be powering it so that people can have those operations. Now to do that, we need a field with the relevant permits. We look at the geology around it. We create a solution design. This is the work we do on a daily basis. So the field, we know about the groundwater, the soil conditions. Um, we need to know about access roads, shipping a container across really weird places, and I've been to really interesting places in Africa. We create a financial structure around that, which at the end of the day is for a bank. So Kenya right now, only Kenya, has, has a power demand of 24,000 megawatts. That's what they would need to get to the power level of India. Now, to build that, only Kenya requires $800 billion. So, that's a lot. And yes, it's a challenge. I heard a, ooh, yes, we, want, we don't have that. Um, but this is for the whole country. But what we can do is go straight to the hospitals where you have the highest impact. But banks are afraid of this process. So, they want to know that we did all the feasibility, we did all the work, and we worked with you to put the first installations there. Through the Stork token and DAS33, through the power of this community, we can put the first installations to one or two hospitals in Kenya, and later Nigeria, and then the Congo, and then Liberia, and then remoter corners of India that don't have that power. We just have to sow that seed because when the banks then see it, they will say, this is a bankable project, let's go there. And that's where the scale comes from. And what Michael said, and that's the beauty and the power of the KPI token, you're not linked to the one machine or two machines or five machines that we're building. The KPI token is linked to the key performance indicators of our growth. So that if you help us put in that plant that seed in the soil for a project, when the bank comes along and says, we'll now put in, so you put in five million, the bank will put in 50, because they know the government of Kenya is going to pay for that electricity. The same way the government in Germany pays for that, for that electricity. Any one of you can put solar on their roof. You don't need to sell it to anybody. You use the power yourself. It's connected to the grid, and the government will pay you a feed in tariff. So that's the guarantee. So, <laughs> the people we have are well, well connected. This is our commercial director, Mukiri, um, talking to the president, Kenyatta, of, of Kenya in this picture. And that's me with the permanent secretary of energy in Kenya on the side. Um, 
also some of, of the Kenyan delegation with the United Nations representatives. We're connected to the government of Indonesia. Um, we are starting conversations in India. We're talking to governments. Now, the competence of the team we have, while obviously we have very, very strong engineering, primarily, where's the confidence of us being able to do that? If you look at the team in, in the bigger picture, that's the commercial team that's building these. Now, these are business lawyers, hedge fund managers, ex-bankers. One of those guys taught economics at Harvard Business School for a while. One of the other guys ran a major hedge fund. The other guy was the leading geologist for the Turkish government, actually, which already has installed one gigawatt of geothermal energy. So for you, this is all new, but there's people who have been doing this for 20 years or more. So when we talk about getting that structure, the governments, they need this. There's people without electricity. There's lives. This makes it different to real lives. And this is the power that you have. It's not, it's, not just, it's not just the money. It's seeding a project that saves lives and make a difference. And if we make a difference to those people's lives, you deserve the reward of the participating in that model. We're talking to an infrastructure bank and they know about the agreement we have with the Kenyan government. And actually, that's why I have to fly away tonight. They are doing a pilot for the hospital, and they've already signed an agreement for a 100 megawatt rollout. Now remember, we'll give a re participation reward for every megawatt we install, because you helped us do the first one. Now, 100 megawatts, is 500 million in cost to build. And obviously, this will take time. But because we together, as a community, solve that feasibility, we're in, we now have a choice of three infrastructure banks and can tell them, listen, one of you is going to give us, one of you is going to help us do the rollout. We have a government guarantee from the government of Kenya. We have a security guarantee by the World Bank that ensures this investment, it is now, we have proof of an installation, this is now bankable. And that, that is the reward that you'll all be participating in, because we have the crew to make it happen. That's the team we have, and that's the team you have. <laughs> yeah. Um, this is the new facility we're moving in, in terms of how many can we build. And I hate the fact that when we took the picture, we didn't have the green circle. I want it on the roof, yeah, which is for next time. And we'll send pictures of that thing. Because we tore that thing down last week, that sign with the new facility. So we can build, in theory, we can build a megawatt a day. We could build in that facility a megawatt per day. Now, obviously, this is not going to happen because this is real-world engineering. But this is the scalability and the potential that we're looking at. So what we do is put those simple steam engines together, market, put them together, market them, go to the countries that we're working with. And this is just an overview of countries. I took out a lot of data because I didn't want to read it. But 4,000 megawatts as a service updatable market. Right now, globally, the same way cars, all your cars use petrol and diesel, and London just said that in the year 2030, if you want to go to London, it has to be an electric car. These things are coming. At the same time, communities around the world, Indonesia, for example, has 18,000 islands as part of that chain. 18,000 islands. They are dependent on diesel generators. I, looked at a, I went to the Cayman Islands, because that's another place where we're doing a pilot. They have, on their main island, a decommissioned U.S. submarine that has a gigantic diesel generator, and that submarine is powering the town. Imagine how noisy that is. Imagine how dirty that is. Imagine how expensive that is. It costs Australia, in central Australia, $2 to produce a kilowatt of electricity. It costs a Kenyan, on average, 
four US dollars to produce a kilowatt of energy. We can deliver that energy at five cents. So the demand is there. That's if, if once we say this, everybody wants to do the work. So obviously we have to scale our manufacturing. We have to bring it up. We have to bring it home. This is really true. It doesn't, doesn't work any other way. Ha! <laughs> I spend a lot of time with Michael and talking to him about the power of this community. And I said it several times here. And this is the, this is the, final, this is the final slide. Because, as I said, it's simple. We have a steam engine that delivers cleaner, cheaper electricity to people that have no power today. That's a no-brainer. Now, the capital markets have changed a lot over the years. Everybody knows that big banks are big banks. They don't talk to normal people anymore. They deal in realms in financial markets and financial interests that are in the tens or even hundreds of millions or billions as a market. Now, venture capital, and those are the people that should have been financing companies like us. In London, the average venture capital company starts their ticket, their investment ticket. Like a medium-sized small one is like 10 million. But most you know, established VC companies want a 20 million ticket or higher. And I've been laughed out of the room because I didn't ask for 100 million twice. Yeah? So I thought maybe I should ask for 100 million. But the truth is, at the end of the day, this is the gap that I believe has the biggest potential for what DAS33 is doing. There's a lot of engineering businesses, and I've already started introducing a few to DAS33 because I have confidence in this community. An engineering company needs between one, five, or 10 million to get started with their projects. Our projects give an immediate return once they're installed. But banks don't care because we're too young or too small or too crazy for why would you want to go to Africa? Why would you want to help people? Show me the money. That's what the bank says. The venture capital say, well, give us half of your company, yeah, and, for, and then we, we will talk to you. Just give us full control. The KPI token changes the relationship between us as a business and you as participants. It creates a dynamic where everything we do legally, we have to, when we sell electricity on a meter, you can't fake a meter, try, try cheating your electricity bill. They'll, they'll come to you. There's a meter that is on a public register, which goes onto a smart contract, which triggers a reward. Full transparency. You don't need to talk to brokers, mediators, financial advisors. If you work with us, you're directly participating in the growth of a business, and that's what you're rewarded for. And when we've established that, the venture capital companies, they'll come. So the first five million generates a turnover, this first launch that we're doing. We grow this with turnover. The venture capital companies will come in in six months, and a year from now, the infrastructure banks that we're already talking to will sign that contract. I have absolute faith and no doubt. If governments say yes and the World Bank says yes, the bank will say yes. So the applause that I need in a second is for you, because you and me, as a community, we have to put that seed into the ground and change lives. Thank you.